Hi, Patricia. I'll be back in three minutes. <laughs> Hi, Patricia. Hi, teacher. Good How are you today? Uh, mm, I'm fine. You're I fine. have a good day, a quiet day. A quiet day. Me too. Yeah. No. Do you do you hear the, the, the noise in the back? No? Yes, I hear. Okay, give me a moment. Some voices. Some voices, okay. Give me a second. No problem. Ay, mi perro. Ah? Yeah, that's a dog. Good evening, Luis Arquimedes. Good evening, Arquimedes. Good evening, Casina. Now, is it better? Be quiet. Be quiet. Okay, I'm so sorry for that. That's my dog. 
No problem. She's not respecting the class right now. <laughs> she should respect the class. Well, we're going to start here today. Thank you so much for being here, right, uh, in, in the class. We're going to continue working with gerunds as objects and subjects, right? We're going to explain a little bit more about that because I, I believe it's necessary to do so. And later we continue with the other topics, okay? So, okay. so as we remember, right, we have gerunds as subjects and as objects, but I think that gerunds as subjects are pretty easy. It's like we understand that they are before the verb, right? The main verb of the sentence, like smoking is bad or swimming uh, in the pool, it's amazing, right? So they are understandable. But we're going to check right now a little bit of how to use gerunds as objects, right? Gerunds as objects. So let me show you right now some explanation. We're gonna see the examples and try to make our own examples and try to complete the exercises that we see there, right? And then we ask questions if needed, right? Let me go ahead and share my computer here. We're going to start with the first option. Okay. Can you see my computer right now? It's just an introduction. Yes, teacher. Okay, very good. So what do we have here in the introduction? In the introduction, they are telling us, right, the use of the gerunds or the function that the gerunds have, right? And they are telling us that they can also be the up, what happened there? They can be the object of the sentence. Right? They can be the object of the sentence. Now, to do that, we also follow like a structure. Right? We have a subject, the verb, the object, right? In this case, it's going to be the gerund plus the rest of the sentence, right? Subject, verb, and in the complement of the sentence after the verb is where we find the gerund, okay? Let's take a look at the examples. We have the examples here, right? Can you see them? Can you see them? Yes, teacher. Okay. Very good. So let's take a look at the first one here, right? And Archimedes is going to help me. Archimedes, I have the first example. It says, Luke likes playing video games. Now tell me what is the subject in that sentence? The subject. Luke likes playing video games. What is the subject? Archimedes? Sorry, it's uh, playing? Playing is the subject of the sentence? Mm -hmm. We are looking for the subject. Look likes. Luke likes playing video games. Uh, I think uh, no, 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 he's not playing. Uh, it's a uh, subject, it's a uh, likes. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. The subject, Archimedes, is Luke. Oh. That's the person who performs the action. So that would be the subject of the sentence. So we're going to put there, right? Subject, right? Yeah. Okay. Veronica, please turn off your microphone. Thank you. So that would be our subject. What's the verb, Patricia? The verb is likes. Likes, very good. The verb is likes, right? Excellent. That would be our verb. Very good. Now, Gracina. Now, Gracina, tell me what is the complement of the sentence? Video games. What? Video games. 
Video games, uh, kind of. Close. Close. The, the complement of the sentence is everything. It's playing, okay. Playing video games, playing video games. Within the complement, right? Remember, this is the complement, right? Complement. Within the complement. Is part of the complement. Exactly. The gerund is the part of the complement. It's part of the complement. What's the gerund, Gracina? Playing. It is playing. Exactly. Playing is the gerund. Right? Right. That's, now, that's how we are going to analyze our sentences, right? Easy. First, we find the verbs, right? And then we start working with the uh, subjects, right? Subjects, verb, and complement. When we are talking about gerunds as objects, the gerund is going to be in the complement. Is that part clear? Yes, teacher. Does anybody have a question? No, teacher. Okay. Now look at the other examples there, right? I hate packing suitcases. My favorite thing to do is reading horror books. He loves telling the story of him winning the math contest. I enjoy working as a volunteer. We hate cleaning the house. They love listening to pop music. Now, based Teacher, on... I have a question. Yes, Azucena. Um, a gerund can be at the beginning of the, of the sentence. Yes, but as a subject. Right now we're working... As, as, as a subject. subject. Yes, right now we're working as objects, only objects. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Only objects. Good question. So in this case, this gerund, let's make it gerund as object, right? Thank you, Susana. So we can clarify a little bit more there. Here as object. Something else? No? Are you sure? Miss? Yes? Yesterday, uh, we saw, and we saw uh, the, the Yerun as a noun, and now is the gerund as a object. Mm. As a subject. Yes and no. Yesterday, yes. yesterday we learned, Sylvia, of how to use gerunds because gerunds are gerunds are nouns all the time. So this is a noun. Okay. okay. This is okay. a noun. What we learned yesterday was what Azucena mentioned that we work with the gerund as the subject of the sentence, as the subject. Right now, the subject is look, it's not the year. We can say also, if we want to use this, right? I want to use this as my object, I can say, playing video games, take, no, playing video games makes children lazy. Just to say something, right? I don't believe in that, but just to say something. If we have this sentence right here, right? Playing video games makes children lazy. Now, in this case, yes, we can see that the gerund is here, right? And it's mm -hmm. part of the subject, right? Mm -hmm. In this case, this also is the subject oh, yeah. of the sentence. The verb is going to be makes. And my mm -hmm. complement is going to be children mm -hmm. late. Right? And you see, we have it as a subject. And it's the same phrase. It's the same gerund phrase. But now is gerund as a subject. Very good question, Sylvia, and thank you so much for bringing that up, right? So we can see the differences. Very good, right? We have here the verb, and here the complement. But the gerund is only playing. 
That's the word. So here is uh, is a gerund phrase. Gerund phrase, but the gerund is only play. That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Asusena. Thank you, Sylvia. Anybody else with a question? Do you understand? Do you do you see the differences now? Yesterday was a little bit like ah, we don't know what to do. <laughs> Right, but do you see the differences? Yes, teacher. Yes? Yes, I yes. Okay, very good. Now, if you want to take a screenshot of the examples, because I would like to see some of your examples as well. Right, it would be important and really, really helpful to see some of your examples. Okay, so based on what we just saw, right, for the examples, can we continue and try to make an example and uh, an exercise? Yes. Are you ready for yes. an exercise? Yes. Okay. Let's yes. Go, let's go ahead and see this exercise right now. We're gonna close this. Right, and I'm going to show you. Welcome, Veronica, Adriana, uh, Mayra, and Rosa to this class. Welcome, welcome. I'm going to show you the next exercise. Give me a moment. Dun, dun, dun. I have two exercises, okay? Okay, now. Look at this, right? Look at this information. It says complete the following exercises about gerunds and subjects, right? So what we're, oops, what we're going to do is the following. We have the sentences and we have the gerunds. Answering, going, playing, watching, buying, and booking. What we're going to do is that we're going to try to move them right, to see which one belongs to the sentence, okay? You have five minutes to try to do that. Let's do it. Right, they are pretty easy. The, the, the vocabulary, it's pretty easy, it's understandable. We're just practicing just gerunds and subjects, right? Are you ready? Yes, teacher. Gracina is ready. What about the other? Finish, teacher. Yes. Okay. Now let's continue there. 
right here and let's check the answers. I would like to listen to Gracina, number one. He likes? Uh, he likes watching the news every morning. He likes watching the news every morning, okay. Patricia, number two. Uh, my favorite activities is playing darts. Is playing darts, okay. Which is kind of weird, actually. Uh, Azucena, number three. My friends and I. Sorry. Uh, my friends and I love going to the cinema. Love going to the cinema. Good. Uh, continue there, please, Adriana. They recommend it. They recommend it. Um, Booking a room in a five-star hotel. 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 Yes. <laughs> Booking a room in a five-star hotel, which is pretty expensive. Uh, Rosa, number next. We are considering. We are considering selling a new digital camera. Answering or buying? We only have two options. I'm... No, Mayra, do you have the answer? Selling. We are considering buying a new digital camera. Buying a new digital camera, good. Juan? Do delay. To delay answering my call. My call. Okay, let's check. Yeah. Very good. Six out of six. Excellent job. Very good. Very, very good. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the next one. We have two questions here. When the gerund is used as an object, is used as a singular noun, is used as a plural noun. A singular noun, I think. Is used as a singular noun, let's check. Very good. Is gerunds, no matter if they are subjects or objects, they are always singular, right? Gerunds are always singular. Now let's go to the next question. When the gerund is used as a noun, okay, it can be used as the subject, complement, or object of the sentence. It cannot be used as the subject, complement, or object of the sentence. Can or can't? Tricky, right? I guess yeah. it's can't. It can. can. can? Yes. Yes, okay. <clears throat> Very good. Excellent job. Thank you so much. We have the first exercise, okay? The first one. We have the first one. We're going to do another one. But this one is going to be divided, okay? It's going to be divided. Let me show it to you. Right, we have here gerunds as objects. Right now we're focusing on objects. Right, we have some explanation, yes, yes, yes. But something important, right? Some verbs can be followed by either a gerund or an infinitive. Remember infinitives, you saw infinitives already, like like, love, <laughs> swimming, right? <laughs> I'm so sorry for the noise, right? So we have there, uh, let me see, 15 sentences, right? Can you see them? We have the first one is, I often go to the beach on weekends. I like swimming. Here, these are verbs, okay? They are verbs. I want you to make them gerunds, which means that you're going to remember the ing rule. 
which is pretty awesome. We're going to remember that. You are not going to make the, fifth, the 14 sentences that are missing. You are going to actually complete some of them. We have 11 people, right? We have 11 people, so I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, assign this to some of you, okay? Let me see here. Now, from number two to number five, from number two to number five is going to be Patricia, okay, Adriana, and Guti. Right? From number six to ten. Six to ten is going to be Gracina, Juan, Luis, and Mayra. Right? And from eleven to fifteen is going to be Asu, Rosa, Sylvia, and Veronica. Right? So, do you have your numbers? Right? Let's start. You're gonna focus on only that. Right? Let's do it. Oops. There you are. That's much better. Right? Remember, Patricia, Diana, and Guti, only from two to five. Did you finish, Patricia? Yes, teacher. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay, I think we had enough time, right? So we're gonna go ahead and, and see the answers, right? Uh, let's just start here with Patricia. Patricia, what do you have for number two? Number two, Robert has a real sport car. He enjoys driving. He enjoys driving, right? Remember, all of these examples are Jerons working as subjects, okay? Thank you so much, uh, Patricia. I think we're gonna use red. 
she looks. It looks more outstanding, okay? Uh, Adriana, go with number three. My friends. My friends hate um, cooking. They always eat at restaurants. Okay, cooking. They always eat at restaurants, okay? Thank you so much. Let's go with a uh, goodie. Mary. Mary like watching TV, but she doesn't have a television. That's weird, right? <laughs> Thank you so much, Miss Guti. Number five, please, Patricia. Number five. Um, yeah. I bought a new bicycle last week. I love cycling. Cycling. Okay. Very well. Number six, Gracina. Gracina? If you like reading, there is a great book store near. If you like? If you like reading, mm -hmm. there is a great book store near me. Nearby, okay, very good. Number seven, Juan, Thomas. Thomas, Thomas enjoys painting. Painting with a lot of different colors. Thomas enjoys painting with lots of different colors. Enjoys, Juan, enjoys. No, enjoys, no, enjoys. Enjoys. There you are. Thank you. Lois, number eight. Number eight is uh, Richard lives near a mountain, so he often goes hunting in the winter. Hunting in the winter. Wow, hunting. That's interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. We're going to see that later, okay? Okay. Number nine, Mayra. I'm not sure what is the correct pronunciation, but I think it's skin or okay. Skin. Skin. okay. I dislike. I need you to read the whole sentence, Mayra, please. Mayra, can you read the whole sentence? Sorry, I dislike. Skin because I always fall down on the ice. Okay, I dislike skin because I always fall down on the ice. Good. Now go with number 10, please, Gracina. Okay. Um, last summer, Jenny tried surfing with her new software. Software. Very good, and software. 11, Asu. My brother likes seafood, so he likes, I think it's fishing. Fishing, okay. Fishing. fishing. Thank you, Asu. Number 12, Rosa. I like, I sorry, I really hate washing dirty dishes. Washing dirty dishes, dirty. Dirty, dirty dishes. Dirty dishes. It's therapeutic. You, you're washing the dishes, you're thinking about life. <laughs> Number 13, Sylvia. Sam doesn't like to kill animals. So he never goes hunting. Hunting, aha. Uh -huh. So we have a gem repeated here. We're gonna see which one is the best, okay? 14, uh, Veronica. Mm -hmm. I don't like dancing because I am not a good dancer. <gasps> Why not, why not? And the last one. Please, uh, let's see here. Asu, I'm sorry. Okay. 
I'm sorry, but I can go running with you. I hurt my foot. I hurt my foot. I have an injury. Okay, good. Now, there and is And I think number. 11, it can be cooking. I was confused. Huh? 11, number 11, uh, it can be cooking. I was confused. <laughs> so he likes cooking. Sorry. Uh huh. But in this case, because of the context, we rather use fishing. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> but there is one that we need to change. Number eight. We need to change number eight. Which is the best one for number eight, everyone? Is it hunting? No. What's the correct it's, it's option? Skating. It's skating. Skating, thank you. Skating. And look, how many gerunds do you have there? Many, right? So do you have questions right now about this, guys? Any no questions? Teacher. No? Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. No questions? Can I erase this? Yes? Yes, I can. Okay. We go there, we click everything. What we're going to do here, I think we're going to uh, work with some examples with subjects. Right? Ask subjects because yesterday we just look at some examples, right? So look at this right here. We have other uh, 15, right? 15 more examples. Now we're gonna start here, look at this. Eating a lot of vegetables is important for good health. But we're gonna do something here. Besides selecting, listen, besides selecting the correct gerund, I want you to find the main verb in the sentence. So, here I have eating lots of vegetables is important for good health. So what is the verb? Is, right? That's a verb. So I want you to identify there and not forget which is the verb, okay? So you can make a difference between the subject, verb, and object. It doesn't matter if, we, if the verb is repeated. I want you to understand which one is it. Is that right? Now, we're gonna start here putting the numbers again. We're gonna have here from two to five. We're gonna have Veronica, right? We're gonna have Guti and Luis. Right, from six to 10, we're gonna have Patricia. We're going to have, uh, let's see. Rosa and Veronica. From 11 to 15, oh, Rosa, Veronica, and Sylvia. From 11 to 15, we're going to have Adriana, Juan, and da, da, da. Oh, Cody, welcome, Cody. Hi, teacher. I'm late. I'm sorry. Or it's okay. You're here. You're here. Who else am I missing? Gracina, right? Gracina. Me, teacher. Who is me? Asu. Ah, pues sí. Asu. Mayra, Mayra, right? Feliz noche. Ok. ¿Estamos bien? ¿Anotamos a todos aquí? Sí, ¿verdad? Ok, let's start. Let's start. Yes, I think we mentioned everyone here. And let's start right there.
Which is the best option? Oh my guys, just one hour. It's so short. Did you finish? Let me know, please. Now, these ones are a little bit more complicated. These are more complete, right? Just in case for the context. Finish, teacher. Okay, Patricia, finish. What about the others? <laughs> finish. Finish, finish. Okay. Veronica. Yes. Number two. In the number two, finding, uh, finding a parking space is, is difficult in the morning. Okay, finding. Repeat with me. Finding. 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 Finding a parking space is difficult in the mornings. Okay, thank you. Guti, number three. Cycling to work is a great way to get some exercise. That sounds like a plan, right? Cycling. Cycling to work. Good. Thank you. Luis, number four. Number four, uh, reading, reading books and magazine can help you to learn English. That is true. Very good. Thank you. Asu, number five. Cooking is fun. I love making dinner for my friends. Okay. Cooking is fun. Thank you so much. Number six, Patricia. Swimming is a great way to get fit, but I'm afraid of the water. I'm afraid of, I'm afraid of, repeat. I'm afraid of. There you are, thank you. I'm afraid of, thank you. You're welcome, number seven, Rosa. <laughs> Sleeping is an activity that any, all animals do. However, did you know that cat sleeps for two or three of their life. Okay, two thirds of their lives. Repeat. Two thirds of their lives. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we go with Veronica, number eight. Smoking cigarette 
It's very bad for your health. Okay, smoking cigarettes, okay? It's very bad for your health. Cigarettes, repeat. Cigarettes. Very well. Uh, Sylvia, number nine. Uh, can you, uh, watching TV is bad for my eyes. That's why my mother says. <laughs> That's why my Latina mother says, right? <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Number 10, Mayra. Learning about other people and cultures is fascinating. Learning about other people and culture is fascinating. Okay, good. 11, Adriana. Singing is, is my, my... I don't <laughs> see. Singing, in my, singing is my sister's favorite hobby. She has a great voice. Singing, uh -huh, okay. Singing is my sister's favorite hobby. Juan, number 12. You have two there. Uh -huh. <laughs> Drinking and driving is a serious crime. It is, it is in El Salvador is, if you get caught, right? Drinking and driving. Thank you. Now 13, Cody. Shopping is boring. I hate shopping malls. Oh, how dare you? Okay. <laughs> how dare Not you? Not for me. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> hey, Gracina, 14 and 15. Okay. Uh, talking is not a love during the exam. Okay, and 15? 15, uh, flying makes me nervous. And I prefer traveling by train. Very good, thank you so much. Now, we have there right, our examples for uh, gerunds as subjects, right? Any questions right now? No? No, teacher. Nope. Did you copy? Did you take a screenshot to have the vocabulary? Always, always copy the vocabulary, okay? It's important we do that. So now we're gonna go ahead and uh, work here, right? Stop sharing, right? We already work with gerunds. So we are going to continue here with our next, well, you complete the knowledge check, please. Right, complete that. We're gonna go yes, lesson teacher. two. Okay, lesson 2.5, right? We will learn how to use adjectives and nouns to make comparisons. So let's go ahead and watch these two videos for today, right? And we can make our knowledge check uh, as well, right? Let's go. Uh, tell me if you can listen to the video. Hi, everyone. By the end of this. Do you listen to that? Yes, teacher. Yes. yes. I'm going to put myself on mute. Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to compare different jobs using adjectives and nouns. For example, let's say that you're considering being a fashion designer or an accountant. Being a fashion designer is more interesting than being an accountant. Or maybe you're considering working as a doctor or a nurse. So a doctor has worse hours than a nurse. So in order to express these ideas, we need to use adjectives and nouns to make these comparisons. So let me do the following. Let me just uh, present the structure. But uh, before we do that, what I would like to do is present this um, comparison structures. Uh, let me just quickly point out that um, all the comparisons that we're going to do in this class and also the following, we're, we're just going to use these few comparisons, as you can see. We're going to use these words to make the comparisons. So as you can see, we could say more. And um, here in the middle, we will include an adjective. 
uh, and um, and then we'll include Dan, and that will make the comparison there. Um, on the other hand, we could use less, and at the same time, we'll use an adjective there. Um, so a quick example: um, being a fashion designer is more interesting than being an accountant. Okay, or being an accountant is less interesting than being a fashion designer, and so on and so forth. Um, I guess also, uh, since I pointed out a doctor, a doctor has worse hours than a nurse, or a nurse has better hours than a doctor. Uh, and then we're going to use this um, other ones here to point out that they might have similarities, that they might be the same or that they might not be the same. Um, and so that's what we're going to be doing in uh, this class. So let's try to make the comparison with, between two jobs. Um, what we'll do is we'll select this first two, as you can see here. So we have this one looks like a lawyer, and picture number two looks like a mechanic. So let's make the comparison between lawyer and a mechanic. Before we do that, we want to have some uh, work-related adjectives in mind, such as stressful, fantastic, fascinating, difficult, easy, interesting, dangerous, and of course there are many more, but because of time we're not going to go through um, a lot of other adjectives. Uh, and we also want to have, uh, or we want to consider work-related uh, nouns. So what are nouns? They're just people, places, or things, right? So in this case, when we think about jobs, we want to think about things like hours, like how many hours you work, Education, uh, how much education do you have? Uh, work, uh, is your job, does your job consist of doing a lot of work, right? Uh, and these are the kind of things that we want to keep in mind in order for us to make uh, these comparisons. So what can we say about a lawyer versus, uh, let's say, a mechanic, right? We want to make the comparison between those two. Well. Uh, we could say the following. I think we could say that working as a lawyer uh, is more <coughs> stressful than working as as a mechanic. And then, so we will use an adjective in this case. I decided to use the adjective stressful, uh, and it's. I think it's also important to mention that. This is an, an opinion, right? So my opinion could be different than yours. You could think the opposite of this. So I, I wouldn't know neither one of those two because I never worked as a lawyer or as a mechanic, so I wouldn't know which one is more stressful. But it sounds like the lawyer is more stressful, right? And the way that we do it is, well, we're, notice that we're continuing using general phrases similar to uh, the previous class that we had where we're where we learn how to make general phrases. So working as a lawyer is more stressful than working as a mechanic. Um, at the same time, you could uh, you could say working as a mechanic is less stressful than working as a lawyer, um, and that. Okay, here we have the structures, right? Previously, he showed us in the video different adjectives, but we know adjectives already. I mean, we are pre-advanced level, right? What you can notice here is that we are using gerunds, right? Gerunds to make our examples. So we have this. I want you to remember this, right? We have the structures here, right? And let me put it like this. If we have this structure, right, uh, more than, right, that's double positive, right? It's more, right, double positive, more than, right? Better is actually triple, right? Something can be good, but better it goes ba, 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 right? Up. As, as is equal right? Equal. Less than is mm -mm, not good, people. That's not good, right? Worse than, 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 
tan, tan, tan. Not too good. Not as, it's still equal, but it's negative, right? I can tell you, uh, for example, uh, working, working as a teacher is not as, is not as good as working as a supervisor, right? So we're making a comparison, but not as plus adjective, it's gonna make it that it's equal, but in a negative way, right? In a negative way. Now, uh, we can say here, eating, eating vegetables is better is uh, but I think I think better is already the adjective. Uh, eating vegetables is better than eating only potatoes. Eating fries. Eating fries. fries. Yes, eating fries. Exactly. Eating fries. Um, exercising every day is not as, as good as having, no, sorry. Exercising every day is as good as having an excellent diet, right? So we are making our examples here, comparing, right? Remember, to compare, we need two things. We need to do two people, one, two. We need two situations, one, two. Two places. To animals, right? We cannot compare if there is only one thing. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. Let's continue. Yes, teacher. Let's continue watching. I think we have just a few minutes. We finish the video. Okay. I'm gonna put myself on mute again. That, in essence, is basically the same sentence, right? But it's just in a different way. Working as a mechanic is working as less a mechanic is less stressful than sorry. working as a lawyer. There you go. There we go. And the reason I did this is because I quickly wanted to point out that we can use either more um, or we could also use less. Right. So what else could we say about a lawyer and a mechanic? is as interesting as working as a mechanic. So if I absolutely love cars, then definitely I think that working as a mechanic is very interesting. So in this case, I wanted to point this one out uh, because I want to express that both jobs are the same. So to me, both jobs have the same level, if you will, right? They are the same. One is not better than the other. Uh, and again, this is my opinion um, because I love cars and I also think that um, uh, lawyers are interesting and the work that the lawyers do is very interesting. So again, I want to point out that in this case, I'm using adjectives to make the comparisons. What I want to do next is use nouns to make the comparisons. So what kind of nouns can we think about when uh, we think about comparing these two jobs? Well, previously I mentioned that we can think of things like hours, maybe education, uh, or perhaps the type of work that people do. So, well, lawyer and mechanic, it, it usually is the case that a lawyer has more education than a mechanic, right? So uh, in this case, we can say that a lawyer has more education uh, than a mechanic. Uh, this is the noun that I am using to compare. What else can we say about the two jobs? Well, um, I could probably say that a mechanic has better hours than a lawyer. Okay, and in this case, as you can see, I used the one here in the middle better, and in the middle, I included uh, the noun to make the comparisons, right? So the noun that I'm using to compare, it's ours. 
At the same time, I could say a lawyer has worse hours than a mechanic. Okay. Uh, and perhaps I could say that working as a mechanic isn't as much work as working as a lawyer. So what I would like for you to do now is I would like for you to look at all of these jobs. I will be publishing this this document here. Okay. Uh, so we got uh, there's a model, there's a journalist, there's a photographer, a painter, and just choose randomly two jobs that you would like to compare. Okay. Now, do you have any questions about that? Yes, right, many. <laughs> now, uh, we're going to work with that tomorrow. Okay, we're going to explain a little bit more on, on comparisons, but working as a doctor is more interesting than working as a nurse, possibly for you. And that is good because she's putting there her opinion. Remember what he said, this is my opinion, right? Very good. When we make comparisons, right, we say always that they are our opinion. Very good, Patricia, your example is good. Also, Miss Good, you wrote an example that was very good. It, it said, uh, working as a photographer is more as working as Very good, right? Uh, anybody else with a question right now? No question, teacher. Okay. Tomorrow, please bring your examples because we're going to work here and we're going to start working with section three and four because we are behind, right? So please get to work, samples, complete your knowledge check, and I will see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m., okay? Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye, so guys. Bye. Bye. Question, Bye. Good evening. Good evening. Bye. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Okay. Uh -huh. What's your question, Veronica? Uh, I I put in the in the answer. Must be very chang chang changing. I I don't know. Uh, the first question, the first sentence. Okay, I cannot give you the answer. Remember that, <laughs> right? I cannot give you the answer. What do you put there? What's I, the answer that you got? I put must be very ch challenging. Challenging. Challenging, take care of children. But uh, this answer in my case is- Incorrect. Well. Yes, it's incorrect. Yes, it's incorrect. Yes. Right, because must be is not at the beginning. We're putting here, right? Look at this, unscramble the gerund phrases, right? What is the gerund? Must, must be, I put in the- It is in, incorrect. Yes. Okay. It, what is the gerund phrase, Veronica? Uh, I don't know, teach. Ah, but we, we practice today. I need you to, to also look at the gerund phrase. Which one do you think is the gerund? Very challenging, taking care of children must be. What is the gerund? For me, challenging. No. Challenging is an adjective. Taking. Taking care of children. That's the phrase. Taking care of children. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. okay. So what could be the answer? No se vaya, okay. voy a la respuesta. Muy bien, thank you. No, but what's the answer, Verónica? Uh, <laughs> very challenging. No, no se quede siempre con lo mismo que, que la respuesta incorrecta. Eso está bien correcto. No, no. no, I put in the, in the, um, I anterior, I don't know the, the, put, must be very challenging. Okay. Exacto. Entonces, eso está bien correcto. Ya yes. sabemos que taking care of children es el gerund. Okay. Mm -hmm. Y estamos poniéndolo como un gerund phrase 
como subject, ¿ok? Entonces, eso va al inicio. Taking care of children. ¿Y qué pondríamos después? Very cha challenging. ¿Y el verbo must be? Uh, taking, taking care must be very challenging. No. Taking care of children must be very challenging. Taking care... Taking care of children must be very challenging. Must, must be very challenging. Mm -hmm. And the point. The period. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. We are chicken. Okay. Perfect, guys. It's been a pleasure. Thank Have a beautiful night. Bye bye. You. <laughs> Thank, Thank you for you your teacher. Too. Thank you too. Bye bye. Bye bye.